Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Today is Tuesday, October the 15th, 2019. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now somewhere tonight, right, some gambler is looking at the Washington Nationals and they're celebrating, right? The Nationals in baseball are about to win the National League. They have a big lead against the St. Louis Cardinals. And that gambler is going to know that they were early, that they got their ticket when the Nationals were going off at 14 to 1 and higher because that gambler realized that Scherzer, Anibal, Sanchez, and Strasburg were an elite pitching starting rotation and that in a short series some more highly touted opponents like the Dodgers were going to find themselves in a dogfight. Well, let's try to be early in boxing. My basic theory is that we're in a big man era, right? A 6'6", Joshua, 6'7", Wilder, 6'9", Fury, heavyweight era, and that we're going to get back to movement. We're going to get back to smaller guys who are more agile. Agility is going to become king. Right? Already there was talk of Alexander Usyk being the mandatory for one of these alphabet soup titles. Right? I'm just telling you here in mid-October 2019 that I would take Usyk over Wilder. I certainly would take Usyk over Joshua I just think styles make fights. Usyk's going to be too mobile for him. So what I want people to consider is the idea that some heavyweights who've been neglected, even some heavyweights who've had problems, who've lost some matches, are suddenly going to be competitive again. Right? Let me just say too, that when you move from one era to another, everything changes. Even the scoring of fights, how we see fights, will change. Whereas the last five years in the heavyweight division, we've been looking for that big right hand. We've been looking for KOs. Right? Just look at Anthony Joshua's record. Look at the guys he has stopped. Look at Deontay Wilder's record. Look at the guys he has stopped. Right? I'd say those two guys are the two dominant heavyweights probably of the last three years. Right? Tyson Fury is coming back. He's getting back to where he was. In my opinion, Fury's the most talented. But in terms of highlights and big fights, right? It's very hard to move off of Joshua and Wilder. Right? So, what I want people to do is to look at a fight coming up. Ironically, it's on the undercard of Ruiz's rematch against Joshua. But in my opinion, this is one of the biggest, most important fights that could take place at this point in heavyweight. I'm surprised the guys agreed to it. You have Alexander Povetkin, and I'll concede here openly. Povetkin lost to Klitschko, his first loss. Povetkin got stopped by Anthony Joshua. Let me concede that, but understand, Povetkin's an ambush fighter. He moves around the ring, right? He's a guy who doesn't stand right in front of you. I personally thought he was beating Joshua. I know the judges disagreed, okay, whatever. But I personally thought he was beating Joshua until Joshua catches him fortuitously. I thought it was a bit of a lucky punch. With a short right hand as Povetkin jumped in the pocket. 
right? Understand, in my opinion, Joshua was getting undressed. And if he didn't land something big, he was going to be in deeper and deeper trouble in the later rounds of that fight. Well, Joshua landed something big. It was one of Joshua's best moments, right? Povetkin's a guy who has problems with big punchers. Even David Price caught him. Right? Fortunately for Povetkin, he caught David Price more than David Price caught him. But understand, because of his movement, because of his suddenness, he's kind of like a heavyweight version of Sean Porter. Because of his suddenness, I believe he would give, let's say, Deontay Wilder a hard time. And history turns on moments. Wilder had actually crossed the Atlantic or was in the process of crossing the Atlantic to travel to Russia to fight Prevetkin in Prevetkin's backyard when Prevetkin failed a drug test. Right? That's why we didn't get the Wilder Prevetkin fight. As I said at the time here online, I thought. Wilder was doing a suicide mission by traveling to Russia to fight Povetkin. Well, Povetkin, who's still dangerous, who moves. In other words, if Alexander Usyk becomes heavyweight champion, I believe Povetkin would be one of his toughest opponents. He's fighting on the undercard. Right Of the Joshua Ruiz rematch, which I expect Ruiz to win, we'll see if I'm right. The market disagrees with me, at least the casinos. Look at the odds. But understand, Prevetkin is fighting Michael Hunter Jr. Right? Bounty Hunter Jr., right? Michael Hunter was the bounty hunter. He had a son. His son has been a world-class fighter long enough, believe it or not that in the 2007 World Championships he actually beat Andy Ruiz. He goes to the Olympics in 2012 he loses and people need to pay attention to this, right? He's fighting at heavyweight or super heavyweight and he loses to Arthur Beterbiev. Right? When I say Beterbiev doesn't belong at 175, I'm not kidding folks. He fought higher than that as an amateur. Well, understand. Bounty Hunter, then as a pro, becomes only the second man to go the distance, to go 12 rounds against Alexander Usyk. He's already fought Usyk. He fights Alexander Ustinov. In other words, this is a guy who, don't look at the pro record. Look at the entire body of work, amateur record and pros. He fights Ustinov as a pro. Destroys him. Is simply too mobile for him. Right? Ustinov, to me, is the kind of guy who Hunter does best against. Right, a big guy who can't really move that well, who Hunter can just outmaneuver. So he fights Sergei Kuzmin. Right, I have the highlights in my highlight folder right now. Big guy, 6'4", bigger than Hunter, who's small for heavyweight. But understand, I believe that's the future of the division. And Hunter put on quite the show. Throwing combinations is just too fast, is too fluid for a big guy. So one would have thought, if you were managing these guys, that you would keep having them in the ring against big guys. Right? The, the idea is big men have a hard time against Hunter. He's too fluid, at least he was too fluid and too mobile for Andy Ruiz. But no. Instead, we get a fight that really should be a co-feature. 
You have Prevetkin, former heavyweight champion. Mobile. Sudden. Experienced. Experienced enough to have fought. Vladimir Klitschko and Anthony Joshua. Experienced enough to have held the heavyweight title. Right? You have him in against Michael Hunter. Folks, I'm just telling you, the winner of this fight is going to be very well positioned. Right? If, as I suspect, speed, movement, agility replaces power and size at the upper ranks of the heavyweight division, both of these guys are going to be front and center. Now, because Hunter, in my opinion, gets a little lackadaisical. Hunter is more of the freelancer than Prevetkin. Because I believe Prevetkin hits harder than Hunter. Right? I'm expecting Prevetkin to win this fight. Now, I know there's a concern on Prevetkin's age. He is older. Right? But, what I want people to consider is the fact that this is the heavyweight division. He's not the only guy in his late 30s, early 40s, who's an elite fighter at heavyweight. All you have to do is look at Luis Ortiz. Right? Understand, too, age doesn't matter that much when the focus in the division hasn't been hand speed and reflexes. Right now, let me just say, just looking at the heavyweight division, there are many possible outcomes. Andy Ruiz does have hand speed and reflexes. He's a combination puncher. He's an offensive juggernaut. But he doesn't have the legs to move around the ring with a Michael Hunter who beat him in the amateurs or perhaps and we'll find out if the fight happens an Alexander Povetkin. So if you're a fan of the heavyweight division if you're looking for a reason to watch Ruiz Joshua 2 the promoter just gave you one because this fight Michael Hunter Jr against Alexander Povetkin, in my opinion, is one of the best fights that could be made at heavyweight. Let me also say, too, I know Dylan White beat Joseph Parker. Okay, fair enough. And Dylan White certainly has one of the division's best jabs. No question about it. I just don't think Dylan White moves well enough to be a serious threat to Alexander Usyk. Right? I believe Michael Hunter moves better than Dylan White. I believe movement is going to be at a premium in the heavyweight division in the years to come. Now, I know there are many, <laughs> many people out there, trust me, you're in my comment section in every video I make, who believe that the big men still rule the roost. That nothing has changed, right? I'm sure... Many people believe Deontay Wilder is going to just walk through. Luis Ortiz, uh, Deontay Wilder is going to walk through. Tyson Fury in the rematch, right? Fury's doing things like fooling around with WWE. People are a little concerned about Fury's focus. And I know people are going to convince themselves that Anthony Joshua, who is the betting favorite, is going to walk through. Andy Ruiz, and that the new heavyweight division is the same old heavyweight division. That that first Ruiz fight was a hiccup, and that really the fight we want to see is Deontay Wilder, after he's picked up the lineal title, going off against Anthony Joshua. Right? What I want those folks to do is to consider the inconvenient truth that Alexander Usyk apparently is in line for the winner 
of the Ruiz Joshua fight. Right now I heard Kubrat Pulev, and only in boxing can you have this, right? I heard Kubrat Pulev is also in line. Who knows how they're going to sort that out? Who knows who's going to pick who to fight? But just to understand, smaller men are going to mount a huge threat to these bigger guys. Right? Neither Joshua nor Wilder, in my opinion, boxes as well as Usyk. Right? I think Andy Ruiz has a better shot against Usyk than Anthony Joshua. I know that sounds hard. I just think Joshua is at a boxing, a hand speed, a uh, movement disadvantage that's pronounced against Alexander Usyk. Ruiz is at a movement disadvantage against Usyk, but Ruiz probably has faster hands than Usyk. Ruiz is really gifted in hand speed. If he looked different, it would be obvious. But because he has a bit of a punch, right? we don't give him the credit. He's chronically underrated. We don't give him the credit that he deserves. So to sum up this video, the fight that's going to have the movement, the fight that's going to be more of a chess match on the Ruiz-Joshua card is actually this undercard fight. Hunter against Prevetkin. Right? I'm just telling you, both guys, both guys are serious contenders, in my opinion, for the heavyweight title. Right? Because both guys are bringing movement and speed that we really haven't seen among elite heavyweights recently. Right? I'm expecting Pervetkin to beat Hunter. Simply because Pervetkin, uh, some of the things that Hunter does, right, move outside, come back inside when the guy's unprepared, you're not going to be able to do that against Pervetkin. Because as Hunter's moving, Pervetkin's moving. And Prevetkin, as David Price fans know, can actually hurt you with shots. I think Hunter is more of a stylist who wears you down. Prevetkin can actually take you out early, like he took out David Price. Right? If Prevetkin wins this fight, I'm just telling you, he's one of the few guys at heavyweight, in my opinion, who can hang with Alexander Usyk. Right? If Hunter takes him out, just understand, Hunter's already fought Usyk. He's already gone 12 rounds with Usyk. I'm just telling you, Hunter has already fought Andy Ruiz. He's already beaten Andy Ruiz in the amateurs. I agree, in the pros, you have several more rounds <laughs> than you do in the amateurs. Right? Maybe I could dodge Andy Ruiz for three rounds. Right? In the pros, I have another nine rounds I have to think about. Ruiz has a punch. Just ask the Joshua people. So this fight is a must-see fight for the boxing hardcore. It's on the undercard of Ruiz Joshua. I'm telling you, I'm so excited about this fight. I'm going to watch the card. Right? And uh, after I see this fight, I'm going to have to remind myself that there's another fight on the card <laughs> that just happens to be for several of the heavyweight titles. Anyway, I like Prevetkin over Michael Hunter. I believe if you're curious about the future of the heavyweight division, this is a must-see fight. These are two of the more mobile, more sudden heavyweights in the division. I believe that's going to be the future. That's how I see it. Let me say this too. Revisit Otto Wallen against Tyson Fury. Right? Tyson Fury gets cut, doesn't want to stay outside, might not have had the confidence to stay outside against a guy who's a better athlete than him. Right? Who was coming forward. So, of course, Wallen's a little bit too straight. Right? Had Wallen just had a shoulder. Then when Fury tried to come in and 
you know, smother him, Valen would have had this hand back here to throw, right? But Valen's too parallel to Fury, right? Now, just imagine Fury with a bad cut trying to come forward on Michael Hunter, who actually won't allow him to clinch because Hunter is moving away. That's what movement does. Right? Completely different dynamic. I believe that just like Joshua couldn't land his jab on Pervetkin, I don't believe Fury would be able to land his jab on Pervetkin or on uh, Michael Hunter. Right? So those moments in Fury's last two fights, both of them Fury comes inside, right? He comes inside on Tom Schwartz. He comes inside on Otto Wallen, right? Puts his head, hides his cut by putting his cut close to Wallen's body, right? What happens if you can't hide the cut? If you're cut, and understand the way cuts work, you get cut in one fight, there's scar tissue. It hardens, right? Guess where your opponent's going to try to target in a fight? If your opponent has a jab, <laughs> if your opponent's a counterpuncher, he's going to try to hit you on that scar tissue. If that scar tissue opens up again, right, because it's tighter than the softer tissue around it. So if it cuts again, right, just imagine what would happen if a Tyson Fury wasn't able to come inside and collapse the pocket on a hunter who moves well backwards or on a Prevetkin who moves well backwards. Right? That's what we're talking about. Of the big men at heavyweight right now, I would say Tyson Fury is probably the heavyweight who can hang the best with what I see coming. This smaller, more agile group. Right? This undercard fight's a must watch. Pervetkin, Michael Hunter Jr. on the undercard of heavyweight champion Andy Ruiz's rematch against former champion Anthony Joshua. I hope you give it a look. Let me know what you think. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.